Hello, I'm Michael Longhurst from the Central West Catchment Management Authority. We're uh, out at Wilgerdale uh, in between uh, Ningen and uh, Duralambane. And we're on a property that's got a woody weed problem and we're trying to turn that problem, uh, that waste biomass, into charcoal instead of uh, burning it to the atmosphere. We're seeing what this uh, new machine can do and how it can uh, add value instead of and remove a cost. Uh, my name's Anthony Gibson. Uh, I'm a yeah, fourth generation farmer. We're here at uh, my property, Wilgerdale at Gerald uh, It's been a, a family farm for over 100 years. And uh, over that 100 years, I think uh, every generation has battled the scourge of woody weeds that you can see around us here. The machine I've had a look at today has been uh, turning this woody weeds, uh, which is a really uh, a bit of a blight and a waste on the on the landscape, into something much more usable and uh, into something that we can lock carbon up and ameliorate the soil. And uh, I can see quite a few benefits of it um, spreading around the the, uh, the landscape, which is a good use of something that uh, just gets pushed up into a heap and, and burnt otherwise at great expense. So this technology uh, is uh, effectively a way of, of splitting uh, waste wood into a charcoal product and a gas product. So my name is Dr Adrian Morford. I'm from a company called Earth Systems in uh, Melbourne, Victoria. And um, we've, uh, myself and a colleague, have invented this machine from scratch. Um, about a year and a half ago we uh, discovered the process on a 44 gallon drum and we've moved it up through various iterations to what you see today. So this is a full-scale um, prototype. It's a 20-foot shipping container that we've converted into a mobile pyrolysis plant. So we call it the MPP20, so mobile pyrolysis plant and the 20 for 20 foot. We've also got an MPP40 for a 40-foot shipping container as well. So we built it for, for the Victorian Government, for the North East Catchment Management Authority. They had a pretty significant waste biomass, stranded waste biomass issue where they were pulling all the willow and the poplar out of the riverways, heaping them into the biggest pile of, uh, biggest wood pile you've ever seen in your life, and then they, they burn it um, because it was just simply uneconomical to recover it. So they wanted something that was environmentally friendly, didn't involve chipping, they didn't want to be lugging around huge chipping machines, um, low cost, and, uh, and integrated with their operations as well. So this thing, this thing can actually be operated by a standard um, 100 horsepower or greater farm tractor or a front end loader or a backhoe or, or something like that. And, um, and look, it's, it's a completely integrated mobile unit. It does everything in situ. So it goes to the log or stick or tree-sized biomass. You open the door, you load the trees and the wood in, you shut the door, you push start. It runs itself. It's a self-sustaining process. It doesn't require fossil fuels to run, which, which is um, consistent with all pyrolysis technologies. Um, and it runs for about four hours, so it's a batch system. And then like a toaster, it goes bing, says I'm finished. It quenches to quench it because it gets incredibly hot in there. And then it quenches it. And we crush it and screen it into straight into bulk bags. So basically when you're finished, you, you walk out and you've got no log biomass lying around. And now you've got bulk bags of biochar either ready for application on the farm, which is preferable because that's, that's a very um, holistic solution. Or it's ready, you know, you can sell it straight to market. My name's... Andrew Briggs from the North East Catchment Management Authority in Victoria. Um, my role as a project officer with the North East Catchment Management Authority, um, working on uh, river health programs in North East Victoria. So part of the um, river health programs that we have involve the harvesting of willow trees and poplars, uh, miscellaneous other woody weeds, and uh, flood debris. And so that uh, um, ends up with large volumes, large piles of, of, of woody debris that, that's, that's essentially just burnt to the atmosphere. And we really felt that there had to be a better, uh, a better use. Um, and instead of viewing this as a waste problem, actually look at it as a, as a resource. So in about 2008, we looked at various options for alternative disposal of the willows and the poplars. Um, biochar stacked up but at the time there was no technology available there was a, there was a technology gap for something that was truly mobile that we could actually take out on on farm um, so through some funding provided by the department of business innovation um, victorian state government um, called the a program called the market validation program uh, which was a really innovative way of doing business but essentially put government 
in a relationship, a partnership with the private sector for the development of, the, um, of new technologies to fill some of these technology gaps. We were successful in that funding and, and, uh, and the partnership through a tendering process. Um, we were partnered with Earth Systems um, and we uh, then developed this technology together. Um, so we were, the, we were the client, I guess, with the, with the problem. Um, we had a lot of input in the project about the practicalities and, and um, uh, real world, you know, how can we make this work and Earth Systems developed the technology to meet the, the criteria. So the, the key criteria were mobility, um, being able to access remote areas, being able to process um, a conversion of woody waste material into biochar without emissions, um, harm, harmful emissions, and end up with a high quality biochar product at the end of the process. The, uh, the weeds you can see around us uh, are a, a headache for landholders for quite a number of reasons. They, they grow in a, a wet season, but they, they don't die off like your grass, so they'll, they'll keep out-competing everything for moisture. They're, uh, they're a nightmare to try and muster through. They, uh, they reduce the ground cover and all your useful grasses. Nothing seems to want to eat them. They're the, um, they're the last things that, to go in a, in a dry pinch. And so all in all, they're, they're a general nuisance. They, um, they reduce biodiversity and, and by, um, by finding a way of turning them into something useful, it's a real win-win situation. Part of the project with ourselves and Earth System, there was a board, uh, a project advisory board, um, and on that board of, of advisors included um, people from the CSIRO and the EPA in Victoria, who, who were really helpful um, in uh, helping us make sure we met any legislative requirements in regards to emissions, um, but also that we were really on top of the game with um, with with the, with the process. So, yeah. So we're getting people to think, you know, um, are weeds still weeds anymore? Potentially, you know, weeds are biomass, and biomass can give us bioenergy, biochar to restore the soil, um, hold moisture, hold nutrients, and uh, increase carrying capacity. This is a very strong pathway into our carbon-constrained um, world. This is constraining carbon. <laughs>